Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep us, O Lord, constant in faith and zealous in witness, that like your servant William Maud, we may live in your fear, die in your favor, and rest in your peace. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. You have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children, for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, in order that we, in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields, to the, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness, to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness with which no one will see, and the holy with holiness without which no one will see the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 73 verses 24 to 29, which are found beginning on page 688 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 73, verses 24 to the end, which we'll recite together in unison. <clears throat> you will guide me by your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and my heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good for me to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will speak of all your works in the gates of the city of Zion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. 
But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today, we celebrate the Feast of William Laud. Um, and although he's a well-known figure in Anglican Church history, perhaps it would be good to review a little bit of his history. William Laud was born in 1573 and became Archbishop of Canterbury in 1633, having been Charles I's principal ecclesiastical advisor for several years before. He was the most prominent of a new generation of churchmen who disliked many of the ritual practices which had developed during the reign of Elizabeth I and who were bitterly opposed by the Puritans. Laud believed the Church of England to be in direct continuity with the medieval church, and he stressed the unity of the church and state, exalting the role of the king as the supreme governor. He emphasized the priesthood and the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist, and caused consternation by insisting on the reverencing of the altar, returning it to its pre-Reformation position against the east wall of the church and hedging it about with rails. As head of the courts of the High Commission and Star Chamber, Laud was abhorred for the harsh sentencing of prominent Puritans. His identification with the unpopular practices of King Charles, his support of the war against Scotland in 1640, and his efforts to make the church independent of Parliament made him widely disliked. He was impeached for treason by the Long Parliament in 1640 and finally beheaded on January 10th, 1645. Laud's reputation had remained has remained controversial to this day. Honored as a martyr and condemned as an intolerant bigot, he was compassionate in his defense of the rights of the common people against landowners. He was honest, devout, loyal to the king, and to the rights and privileges of the Church of England. He tried to reform and protect the church in accordance with his, with his sincere convictions. But in many ways, he was out of step with the views of the majority of his countrymen, especially about the divine right of kings. He made a noble end, praying on the scaffold, the Lord receive my soul and have mercy upon me, and bless this kingdom with peace and charity, that there may not be this effusion of Christian blood amongst them. It occurs to me in reading about William Laud and rem remembering that this is post-Reformation 1670s. Um, what a long time it was for the it took for the church to figure itself out in our own tradition. Remember that uh, it was the 1530s when Henry VIII uh, declared that he was the head of the Church of England. We are now 150 years away from that declaration by the time we get to William Law, and the church is still struggling to figure herself out, to figure out what her place in English society is, not only English society, but in the world. It was 150 years of struggle for the church to figure that out, and then to begin, uh, as the church goes into the, into the 18th century, to begin to find some other balance and um, non-violent path to figuring out what, how to be the church in the world. Um, I mention this because if you pay attention to what's happening in the church around us and in the world around us, you will know that the church is confused again about what her place in the world is. It is not clear how the church is supposed to interact with the powers that be if the church is supposed to interact with the powers that be at all, or whether the church should be standing over and against 
the secular powers that be. It is not clear with whom the church should be in cahoots, or if the church should be in cahoots with anyone at all. It is not clear that most people want anything to do with the life of the church, quite frankly. And so the church is confused and uncertain. This is not a new state for the church, to be, to be perfectly frank. To be confused and uncertain, to be tied up in knots over how it is we are to get along in the world. This is not a new state. This is an old condition for the church to be uncertain, to the church, for the church to be groping and grasping about in the dark, to try to figure out how to be Christ's body in the world, and to discover in the process that some people in the church will do it wrong. Others will do it very well. And in the midst of that, it won't always be clear who is who, which means that it requires careful discernment. Careful discernment to figure out how to be the church in the world. One difference between now and the 1670s is this. In, 1670, in the 1670s, it, were the, it was the archbishops who had to figure that out. Now, it's you and me. I'm not saying that the average person in the 17th century didn't have to figure that out too, but it's the burden of responsibility is more likely to fall directly on your shoulders than to be passed down from you from some bishop or archbishop to figure out how it is to be a part of the church in the world. I'll stand with William Maud on this that one of the best ways to do that is to come to Christ day by day in his sacramental presence and to seek Christ's guidance and Christ's blessing as you figure out with me and with the rest of the church how to be Christ for the world. It has never been easy and it sure isn't easy today. But God will God leads us by his grace. God gives us the promise of blessing and asks us to be faithful as we take up our cross and follow him. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world using form six of the prayers of the people found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our family and friends and neighbors and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation and the world. For all who work for justice for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, for Britt, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters, who worship and work in this place and parish, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all doctors, nurses, and other essential workers who put themselves at risk for the well-being of others, all those who are in financial straits at this difficult time, all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling to bring about an end to the sin of racism, and who are struggling for justice that's been long denied, all those 
who are working to bring about peace in the world as we continue to pray for peace in every corner of the world and for an end to warfare. Continuing to pray for those who are refugees and who are in search of a home. To pray for all those who are homeless, hungry, lost, frightened, alone, or living in great poverty. For those who are in prison, for those who have been exploited and abused, for those who are struggling with addiction, for those who are suffering with mental illness, for all those who suffer in any way in body, mind, or state. And also remembering all those beloved of this parish community, especially Chris, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Kathleen, Mark, Ira, Judith, Lucas, Nick, Jane, Will, Sandra, Russell, Wes, John, Valerie, Brian, Frank, Douglas, Donald, Alice, David, Joan, Marilyn, Donald. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy we do pray. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, giving thanks especially for the beauty of this day, giving thanks for all those who offer themselves for the work of ministry in the church with willing hands and glad hearts. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, remembering especially all those who have died from the coronavirus in the past day, remembering them, all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days, and remembering those who perished in the fire in New York City recently. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, Jesus our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator and he of heaven and earth. Because in the obedience of your saints, you have given us an example of righteousness, and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark, the Evangelist, with blessed William Laud, and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ, the bread of the Lord. The body of Christ, the bread of the Lord, thus we do to honor the name of the Lord. The body of Christ, the bread of the Lord. The body of Christ, the bread of the Lord. The body of Christ, the bread of the Lord.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.